Today, I'm going to react to a video by Mr. Grant Cardone. He's a real estate investment expert. And in the video, he's going to teach us or tell us how to invest in real estate if you're a high earner and use that to pay no tax. I'm going to debunk some of what he says. I'm a CPA. I've been doing this for 30 years. So I've got experience. And I think what you're going to hear is going to be extremely useful for you. So let's get started. Hey, by the way, subscribe so you don't miss future content. Now let's jump in. Hey, you guys that are earning $2 million a year, $1 million, $2 million, $3 million, $5 million, ball players, rappers, big earners, show you a little trick to the wealthy note. Your biggest expense in business, if you got a talent or you got a business, your biz biggest expense is number one, your taxes. Grant, totally agree with you. That's your biggest expense. It is your taxes. And you owe it to yourselves, all of you owe it to yourselves. Take advantage of what's in the code. All right, let's continue. What the wealthy know is how to reduce their tax bill. That's what you don't know that you got to get a handle on. Reduce your tax bill to literally zero and beyond. That's right, beyond. That's where you would get tax refunds or credits going forward to reduce your income tax federal and state to zero. How do you do that? I'm going to show you. Anybody can do it. It's completely legal. And if you don't do it, <laughs> come on, you're just, not, you're just not following the tips of the wealthy. I didn't grow up with wealth. I grew up and had to figure out how to take my talent, increase my income, reduce my tax bill, and then get my money to work for me harder than I worked for my damn money, okay? Welcome to Cardone Capital, Cardone Enterprises. Welcome to my company. I'm gonna show you how to play this game. I mean, why you play any game? To win. Again, I can't reiterate enough. Agree with them 100%. You need to use the tax code to your advantage, whether you're wealthy or you're not wealthy. The opportunities are there. Take advantage of what's in the code. So if you're earning two million bucks a year, we're gonna take that down to zero. You're gonna keep earning your two million, but I'm gonna show you how to use the two. So look, if you're earning a bunch of money, the goal is to take your earnings, reduce it to zero. Still have the money, but take the money and invest it. So let's say you're earning $2 million a year. If you live in New York City, $1 million of that is going to the IRS. That means you got to figure out how to live on $1 million. And if you're a ball player, out of that came 200 grand for an agent, another 200 grand probably for a manager and you're having to live on 800,000. If you buy a house for your mother, you're freaking broke again. So I'm gonna show you how to play the game. You earn 2 million, okay? Live on as little of this money as you can in the beginning. Do not spend earned income. Don't spend it. What you do is you invest it and use it in a second business and or real property. So let's say I take 200 million, the state's gonna take, you're still gonna have your $400,000 go to agents and managers. You got $1.6 million. I want you to invest as much of that $1.6 million into real property. Real property will buy you about $4.8 million worth of, in this case, real estate. So what he's talking about here is you've got a W-2. So you've got an active job that you're earning $2 million. He's proposing that you take whatever you have left which you will have some taxes off of that because there's Social Security and Medicare and things like that. But he's proposing you take the rest of that and invest that in real estate. That $4.8 million worth of real estate, because it's got real property, $4.8 million, for instance, in a deal that I'm doing right now, will provide you with $2.4 million worth of depreciation. 
that reduces this tax bill of 1.6 after your managers, these are expenses, to negative $800,000 that can be CF carry forward. All right. Now here's where I'm going to disagree with Mr. Cardone. Can you do all this stuff? Not saying you can't do it. He's talking about investing in real estate, accelerating depreciation. It's called cost segregation, entirely legal, 100% in the code, basically allows you to allocate purchase price to asset classes that allows you to accelerate depreciation and bring a deduction potentially onto the table. Here's the issue. The issue is, most likely, we're talking about somebody that's not a real estate professional. Mr. Cardone, probably a real estate professional. He can use this however he wants to use it to offset whatever he wants to offset. It's active. For somebody that's got a W-2 that they're making, that, that's $2 million, you can't take real estate loss. It's called a passive loss. It'll be passive income. It's a passive loss. You cannot offset passive loss against active income like a W-2. All right, let's continue. Into future years. That means next year, if you earn $2 million, you're walking into that year with an $800,000 credit against your income. Now you need to check with your tax attorney. You need to check with your accountant. You need to check with your manager and your agent, but I'll promise you all four of them are gonna tell you this guy's on to something. Get your earned income. Earned income needs to be zero and passive income. And here again, he's talking about it's earned income and passive income. You cannot take a pass, I cannot stress this enough. You cannot take a passive loss and offset it against earned income, active income. Can't do it per the IRS tax code. I need to invest in a new whiteboard. Your passive income of the, what did we say? $1.6 million that we invested that we have left over. We, we, we literally, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you literally, no watches, no houses in the beginning, okay? Don't spend any money on the stuff. No Ferraris, take the 1.6, leverage it, It'll buy $4.8 million worth of real property. Okay, you want to stay focused on your baseball, your basketball, your rap, and you want to focus on your business. Or maybe you want to invest this money back in your business and zero out, okay? You want to reinvest in furniture, equipment, uh, if you're a musician, into uh, equipment, touring, anything to do with your business to grow your business. Literally get your earned income to be zero. Now, what he says there about investing in your business well if you're actively managing your business and you're spending money on your business that's a deduction that's perfectly legal that is perfectly that deduction is available to you to offset that active income stream oh the tax bill on zero is zero 61 percent of all citizens in the united states last year made no contribution to the federal income taxes. Your job is to make sure that you take your earned income because you've got a lot of talent, reinvest that money, okay, so that you can be better talent and or prepare for transition when you no longer have that talent. So this $1.6 million of earned income after your agent and your manager, you would invest and leverage three to four times buy $4.8 million worth of real estate that would give you $2.4 million worth of depreciation in the first year. It's a little complicated now. This is called accelerated depreciation. But this is the game. This is the game that the wealthy know how to use. And that's why they tend to use all their earned income. Okay, some of the biggest players in the world, they pay themselves zero, $1 a year. I think Mark Zuckerberg makes $1 a year, but he gets stock options, real property, this $2.4 million of depreciation you get in 2021. If you use it all, you'll get it again in 22. All right, so here he's talking about, hey, you've got this $2.4 million worth of accelerated depreciation 
that we're going to make the assumption that that's what you have as a loss in this real estate endeavor. And if you don't use it all, you could carry forward. 100% accurate. This can be used. It cannot, again, I stress, it cannot be used against active income, period. It can't be unless you are a real estate professional. Chances are if you've got a W-2 and you're a ball player or you're a, uh, or, um, somebody else that's earning money on a W-2 at $2 million, you've got an active business and it's probably not real estate. So can't do that. If you don't use it all, you'll get it again in 2023, and you're gonna to continue to do this every year, okay? I'm gonna to continue to do the same mechanism every year, reinvesting earned income, okay? So stay with me here, okay? Watch what's gonna happen. This $4.8 million worth of real estate, remember this, it's in the box. You own that, that's your position, okay? This $1.6 million that you invested should provide you with about $90,000 a year in income. Passive income, okay? That's in year one. Now here's where that accelerated depreciation can help you. That can be used to offset passive income. That could be used to carry forward and offset passive income coming forward. Again, not active income, passive income. That's the key. One, if you do this again in year two, it's gonna get you another $90,000 a year in passive income. That's 180 grand by year two. But in year two, you now have $9.6 million worth of real estate, real property that should be appreciating in value, providing you and your family with passive income. Now, now we're at about $15,000 a month in passive income, and you're starting to prepare third year, fourth year, fifth year. Now you're at $75,000 a month in passive income. You're gonna exit your career because, look, you got five years, maybe at max. And again, passive income, passive loss. That's what you have to remember. Not active. Ball players, artists, you don't have forever. You're not going to be a 35 year baseball player or basketball player. So if you start multiplying these years in year two, I'm at 180,000 in year four, I'm at 360. In year eight, I'm at 700 grand in passive income per year. And that is not counting the value of the real property, which in this case, if I can take this out eight years, if you could duplicate this every year and not get a pay raise every year, eight years, eight times, if we did this every year, $4.8 million, you've paid no taxes for eight years in a perfect situation. Now, again, I'm gonna tell you, paid no taxes in a perfect situation, Okay, in a perfect situation. But the situation he's talking about isn't the situation where you're gonna pay no taxes. You've got earned income and passive loss. Can't commingle those two. Passive loss, if you, unless you have passive income, that gets carried forward to offset future passive, uh, future passive income, but can't be used to offset your, your active W-2 income. And that would be $38,400,000 worth of real estate that is going up in value every year. If this just goes up 3% a year, I could take this out and I'd say in the next 10 to 15 years, you'll have $100 million worth of real estate. Throwing all passive income, most of the passive income is now not taxed at the highest rates. It's, it, it's somewhere as low as 19% a year where you're paying 48 to 63, depending on whether you live in LA or New York or one of these crazy states. So look. All right, so he talks about passive income and tax rates with passive income. Partially correct, partially, partially incorrect. Passive income, <clears throat> depending on the type, that could have a beneficial tax rate to you. Absolutely accurate. Passive income, like rental passive income, that doesn't necessarily have that beneficial tax rate uh, attached to it. That's taxed at whatever ordinary tax rate that you are in. So whatever rate you are, are paying at, that's the rate you're gonna owe on rental real estate passive income. Look, check with your accountant, but what I'm telling you is real, it's legal, it's legit, and it's what, it's what the wealthy people do. I, can't, I, I could go into another level of this that would be freaking incredible for you. In fact, I will right now. If this property becomes worth $100 million to you, 
doing the kind of real estate that we do, rents go up. As rents go up, what happens is the value of the property goes up. If this real estate is worth 100 million, and let's take this out eight years, you could actually go borrow. Your family could borrow against this portfolio of real estate. Let's say we borrowed $60 million against this real estate. You could take out $40 million just to blow your mind a second, more than you've earned, by the way, 5 million times eight years, more than you've earned in the five years of playing second base or shortstop, okay? Or bouncing your knees on a damn. So what he's talking about here is you're gonna recapitalize this, meaning you're gonna go to a bank and you're basically gonna sell the property to the bank and the bank is gonna give you money based on the value of that property. And that piece, that does not have a tax impact to it. So you getting that, in, in this example, 40 million that Mr. Cardone's explaining here, that isn't gonna have necessarily a tax impact at all. That 40 million is coming into your pockets that you could deploy in whatever way you wanna deploy that without there being a tax impact. Damn court, bouncing those knees, dude. Sooner or later, your knees and your hips and your ankles, are they're gonna quit. But your money shouldn't quit. Your money should last longer than your body lasts, okay? You, you could literally recapitalize, borrow on the 100 million. You cannot borrow on your career when your career is over. You can borrow on your real estate because it's never over. On this, you would borrow $60 million worth of debt. You'd be left with $40 million if this portfolio was paid off. You would walk away with $40 million. You still own the property because you want your family to own it so that you pass it on to your next generations. This $40 million will go in your pocket, in your bank account, and the tax bill would be zero. That's right. You're basically borrowing money out of the future. This is what wealthy people do. Wealthy people buy assets. They take earned income from a talent. Okay, they get money, they take the money, and they don't buy watches and bullshit and houses with it. What they do is they buy a business and or real properties with it. That real property provides you with a tax write-off your earned income is zero over here because you reinvested the earned income. You didn't use the earned income. You didn't consume the earned income buying garbage. What you did was you reinvested the earned income into real property that throws you off passive income that over time will displace and replace your earned income so that you can live while you have an appreciating asset over here. Your talent is depreciating and your Assets are e appreciating, okay? Providing you with passive income. And then in the future, what they do is they'll borrow, not sell, okay? You're gonna borrow against assets, never sell. You don't sell, you borrow, okay? So if I have something worth 100 million, and you will, you're, 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 so what he's saying is here, hey, you're going to recapitalize it. You're going to take get this money out tax free. In essence, uh, you're, you're not selling it. You still own it for sure. So you still have the appreciation opportunity with this, but it's a tax efficient way to get money out of the property. That, that's really what he's saying here. Your talent will not be worth $100 million in the future. If you got a talent, sooner or later it expires, okay? I can borrow against real property, real property that provides income the bank will give you a loan on, and you walk away with $40 million. All right, I'm going to stop the video there. There's, there's some more things, but it's really not relevant to what we're talking about. Uh, bottom line, uh, Mr. Cardone talks about taking active income, a W-2, uh, and using real estate losses to net it out to zero. Can't happen. Internal Revenue Code 469, that tells us can't, can't, can't work that way, does not work that way. Um, not against real estate. I'm Again, I'm staying in my lane. I'm talking about the tax impact here, not talking about the investment in real estate because Ultimately, there are some real tax benefits related to real estate. I totally agree with Mr. Cardone from that standpoint. There is accelerated depreciation. It is passive income, but it's passive income and passive losses. You have to remember that. If you don't know those rules and you're getting into real estate, you know, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to be in a situation where you thought you were paying no taxes and all of a sudden you're getting a big tax bill. So be careful. Know the rules. Um, know those passive rules and active rules 
If you're a real estate professional, you're active. But if you're not, you need to know those real estate passive activity rules. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. You know, if, if you want me to react to something else, I love talking about taxes. If you want me to react to something else, let me know what you want me to react to. See you guys next time.